Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'd like to talk about using Ruby in data science. So how many people related to data science? Hmm. Not many, OK? <laughs> so how many people do you want to use Ruby for data science? Oh, so many people want to use, use Ruby for data science. Me too. So even for us working with Ruby, the opportunities to be involved in data science will increase more and more. But uh, now Ruby hinders us from becoming familiar with data science because Ruby is difficult to use in data science. However, it has been so until recently. The situation is changing. Currently, Ruby is getting easier to use with data science little by little. Did you know? No? <laughs> no one knew it. <laughs> but don't worry, no problem. I'll describe it in this talk. Okay. So today I'll talk about how we can use Ruby in data science. Before that, let me introduce myself. My name is Kenta Murata. My handle name is MRKN. Please call me Kenta or my nickname Muraken. I'm working at Spink as a full-time CWB committer. So this is my company's logo. The company name Speed literally equals to the success of speed. <laughs> yeah. It means that it's it faster than faster what speed means. Yeah. In other words, the company iterates its business trial cycles in overwhelming speed. As I mentioned the previous slide, my company employs me as a full-time CLB committer. So I'm permitted to do any great things for Ruby ecosystem. In this year, I'm mostly working for making tools for data science that are used with application written in Ruby. My talk consists of these topics. At first, I'll talk about the current situation of Ruby in data science. Next, I'll show you the patterns to use Ruby in data science. <laughs> then I'll explain my perspective of the future of Ruby in data science. Finally, I'll conclude my presentation. So let's start the main topics. The first topic is the current situation. Now, there are three major projects for data science in Ruby. This diagram shows the relationships between them. So let me describe in more details about this project. The first is SciRuby. Do you know SciRuby? Not many. I think the SciRuby is most famous one most famous project for people outside of Japan. SciRuby is a set of many gem libraries that, that, that use in metrics as they are in memory tensor data. It has many gem libraries, but many of them are dead because their development has been stopped. <coughs> uh, you can check all the James and the Sailubi in this web page. Let's check it. Oh. So as you can see, there are a lot of libraries listed in this page, but unfortunately, so this red and the error is not usable for now. So half of them are marked dead. I think there are three benefits when you use SciRuby 
gems. The first benefit is you only need Ruby. So in other words, you don't need to prepare other programming language like Python. The second benefit is you can use sparse metrics with M metrics, but the current implementation doesn't support linear algebraic operations such as the PCA for sparse metrics. So you cannot use any matrix for generic NLP, natural language processing tasks. And the last benefit is you can use data frames with DAO. Okay. Do you know data frame? Data frame is a basic data structure to manipulate and visualize living data in data science. It is a two-dimensional data structure, like a SQL table. In Ruby, Daru provides data frame, so we can use data frame with Daru. As I'll describe later, you can also use data frames by using PyCall with Python environment, but while you use Daru, you don't need to use Python together. SciRuby can be usable, but it also has several drawbacks. I think three drawbacks, uh, I, I think there are three important drawbacks in SciRuby gems. The first drawback is that in matrix is extremely slow. So let me show you this problem in the demonstration. Can you read the text? Okay. So to show how in matrix is slow, the following calls compare the three different kinds of summation methods with 1,000 element arrays. So one method is n matrix is sum. Second is array sum introduced in Ruby 2.4. And last is array inject with plus symbol argument. Okay. At first, uh, I should require the dependencies. And this code uh, measures runtime of each method. Okay. As you can see, so. This n matrix result runtime is very large. So drawing bar plot to visualize the result by using RB plot library. Okay. Oh. So <laughs> Yes. So in matrix sum, uh, consume this amount of time, but others uh, not cannot see because in matrix is one time is very large. So as you can see this chart, in matrix sum is tremendously too much slow. So this bug is filed as the issue number 362. So if you want to investigate and fix it, please check this issue and please send your pull request. Uh, back to the slide. The second drawback is about Daru. Uh, DARU can be usable for basic data manipulation, but uh, it lacks functions which Pandas supports for practical data science tasks. 
So I strongly recommend you to use Python or R language if you need to do data mining in your business. <laughs> and the last drawback is that Cyruby is less documented. So it is hard to use when you are a beginner of Cyruby. Uh, the reason why there are three drawbacks is due to the small population of developers and users. So, uh, Cyrobi always welcomes your contributions. The second project is a new Ruby Numo. The founder of this project is Masahiro Tanaka. He is the original developer of the old original NRA. It is the first in-memory tensor library for Ruby. Almost all Rubyists who need to manipulate tensor data in Ruby scripts use the original first NRA in ancient period. Since 2016, Masa Tanaka started Ruby Numo project to rewrite the old NRA for supporting the latest Ruby and the external libraries like Open Plus and to realize his new ideas of the implementation. <laughs> like SciRuby, you only need Ruby, oh, I'm sorry. Ruby Num has some benefits and drawbacks. Like SciRuby, you only need Ruby for using Ruby Numo. And Numo NR is faster than in matrix and pure Ruby so in my opinion, it is the best library for manipulate in-memory numerical tensor data on CPUs. <laughs> but Ruby Numo does not support sparse matrices and data frames. <laughs> it means it is hard to use Ruby Numo for NLP and data science tasks. <laughs> and Ruby Numo is also less documented than SciRuby is. <laughs> Uh, if you're interested in Ruby Numo and want to know the details of Ruby Numo, you can access the English slide and the Japanese talk movie in Ruby Kaigi 2017 at this URL. Please check them. I think you may want to know which SciRuby or Ruby Numo is better. The answer is case by case, I think. If you want to use Ruby for data science without any other languages, SciRuby is better because you need to use data frames, and SciRuby has DARL. If you want to do just scientific computing, such as numerical simulations, and try to implement your own machine learning algorithms, Ruby Numo is better than SciRuby because um, NRA is faster than in metrics. And the third project is Ruby Data Tools. This is based on Apache Arrow and its Ruby binding, Red Arrow. Red Data Tools is a very young project. It started since this February. But as of today, it has these five gems. The big, biggest benefit of Ruby data tools is that you can try to use Apache Arrow in Ruby. <laughs> Additionally, the core developer of Ruby data tools, Kohei Suto, is a member of Apache Arrow's project management committee. And this means you can continue to use Apache Arrow in Ruby in the future, too. <laughs> but there are two drawbacks. The first is that gems of Ruby data tools is too young to use in production. So you should have a strong determination to employ this for your business products. <laughs> the second drawback is now Apache Arrow is just a data format for in-memory and streaming I.O. So you cannot use it for manipulating data. You can 
Now you can do only load, save, and converting data, but they are too much faster than other way. <laughs> Apache Arrow has a plan to implement the data manipulation APIs, so this drawback will be resolved in ta uh, by time. <laughs> As you can see so far, it is hard to do data science by only Ruby. And almost all data scientists shouldn't want to use Ruby in their jobs because they need the biggest powers of standard data tools in Python and R, such as Pandas and Spark, especially in exploratory data analysis. Exploratory data analysis phase is most important for data mining and machine learning. The existing tools in Ruby aren't very durable for such use. Uh, but as you know, Ruby and Ruby on Rails are best for writing business web applications. So you should use Ruby and the other languages like Python together. How to do it? I made a PyCall for such use cases. So what is PyCall? Using PyCall, you can use Python libraries from your Ruby code very naturally. PyCall consists of two parts. The one part is the Ruby binding library of libpython.so. It is the core of Python interpreter. Another part is the gateway between Ruby and Python to translate their object systems. By the part by the first part, PyCall provides us to access to the functions of Python interpreter, and by the second part, PyCall realizes the natural feeling of, of, for us Rubyists in the use of Python functions. Let's look at the simple example use of PyCall. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Too small font. Okay, I skip this slide. No, don't don't worry. I uh, prepared a demonstration for later part. Uh, currently, I made wrappers for NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib, but also I want to make wrappers for Scikit-Learn, Seaborn, Bokeh, Keras, and so on. I need help to increase supported Python libraries. If you are interested to write such wrappers, please write your own wrapper published on GitHub and tell me. By the way, PyCall also provides features to use Python libraries without writing wrapper libraries. So you can just load Python libraries as modules and use the modules. Let me show you a demonstration of PyCall. In this demonstration, we collect the result of the benchmark in a Pandas data frame and visualize it by Seaborn library. At first, we need to prepare requirements. In this demonstration, uh, I use in matrix and numo and uh, Pandas and Matplotlib. And this is a benchmark call. In this benchmark call, uh, I use 
10,000 element arrays and calculate uh, summation uh, 100 times for each method. Uh, the first method is array inject. The second is uh, while expression. And the third is array sum. And second is enumerable sum. And fourth is in matrix sum. And the last is new minority sum. Okay. Let's go. In this code, uh, I measure runtime of the method by benchmark dot real time, and directory uh, store into the pandas data frame. So, yeah, uh, I get the results in a pandas data frame. This is the result. Using group by method, uh, calculate the statistics summaries, summaries for each method. Okay. As you can see, uh, in matrix is uh, most slow, and the second is uh, inject, okay. And then uh, I visualize the data frame by Seaborn's function. Okay. Using PyCore.import module method, uh, we can import Python libraries as a module, okay. So this is the result. So in the matrix, this result is very large, so we cannot see other methods. So I want to show uh, other mes only other, uh, except uh, in the matrix result. So using with data frames functions, okay. This is a uh, bar plot result in matrix is result. So most of first method is array sum, and the second is an array. Okay, this demonstration is finished. So. This demonstration is very simple, but uh, there are uh, other resources I used previously to show PyCore examples. In Ruby Kaigi 2017, I demonstrated the Keras example and the Rails integration example. <coughs> also, in Ruby Kaigi 2017, I did Ruby data workshop. These resources and materials are available on GitHub. I've already uploaded this slide on my speaker deck, speakerdeck.com slash MRKN. So you can access these URLs from the slide. Please check it. And there are other example users of PyCores. So there are Two blog posts about scikit-run examples by Soren D. The first article is uh, simple users of scikit-run, and the second is uh, OCR with scikit-run's random forest classifier. And uh, in Kiwi Ruby conference in this year, uh, May 
held the workshop about the Pi core. You can uh, see the workshop materials by this link. Please check them. So as you can see in the demo, PyCall provides us access to the functions of PyCall data tools. So you can use all the following tools from your Ruby code. They are all the standard tools in data science. So far, we've learned about the benefits and drawbacks of SciRuby, Ruby, Numo, and Red Data Tools. And we've learned what we can do with PyCall. From here, I want to show you the current best patterns to use Ruby in data science. As I mentioned before, you should use Ruby and other languages like PyCall together because almost all data scientists shouldn't want to use Ruby in their jobs and they need the biggest powers of standard data tools like pandas to do exploratory data analysis. It's the most important task to find valuable knowledge from living data from business. And also, we want to use Ruby and Ruby on Rails for writing our business application because it is best for us. So I propose three implementation patterns to integrate application written in Ruby and data processing system written in Python. Okay. The first pattern is referring the same database directory from both systems. This is very easy to implement, but the changes in application may affect data processing side, especially about the data schema changes. The second pattern is calling the functions of data processing style from application side. To implement this pattern, we need to serialize the data to pass it from application to data processing system. So large serialization cost can be occurred. The last pattern is using a pi call to call the function of data processing system. We can write the driver code in Ruby. So we can share the active record models between application and the data processing system. Using PyCall, we can build Pandas data frames directly from Ruby. So no serialization cost in this pattern. We need to choose the right way according to the situation. The last part of this talk is the future perspective of Ruby in data science. I want to explain about the two topics about the future. One is Apache Arrow, and the other is GP, GPU, and deep learning. Apache Arrow is efficient data format and going to have efficient data manipulate operations. So I think it will be the core of almost data tools in the future. It's already decided to replace the core part of Pandas 2.0 with Apache Arrow, and PySpark already uses Apache Arrow for exchanging data between Python and Spark. So the Red Data Tools project is important for the future of Ruby's data science ecosystem. If you're interested in Apache Arrow, I strongly recommend it to join Red Data Tools project. You can access the Red Data Tools project at the URL. Next is about the GPGPU. About the GPGPU, uh, as Prasen Anand presented yesterday, we already have array fire for use GPU. <laughs> Moreover, two GP GPU projects were accepted by Ruby Grant this year. One is RB CUDA by Prasen, that is binding of CUDA runtime libraries. 
Another Ruby grant project is proposed by Sanat, one of the Ruby committers maintaining logger. He will make Kumo, that is a Kupai clone for Numa NRA. And for deep learning, we already have TensorFlow RB written by Arafato. <laughs> Moreover, there are two work in progress projects I recognize. Red China is a part of Red Data Tools project. <laughs> this is started by Hatapi to rewrite China in Ruby. This project uses the new NRA for tensor data, so it will be able to use GPU by Kumo. <laughs> and now I'm working for writing Ruby binding of MXNet. I think it can be released after a few months. Finally, I'll conclude my presentation. In my presentation, I described three major projects in Ruby about data science. They are SciRuby, Ruby Numo, and Red Data Tools. Next, I demonstrated PyCore with an example of benchmark visualization. <laughs> Moreover, I illustrated three patterns to integrate application written in Ruby and data processing system written in Python. Finally, I talked about a future perspective about Apache Arrow, GPGPU, and deep learning. And uh, we prepared the Docker image that contains almost all things to try Ruby's data science ecosystem. <laughs> so you can run Jupyter Notebook as my demonstration in a Docker container by this command. Please try it. So that's all. Thank you.